Many people obtain life insurance protection through a group insurance policy sponsored by their employer, labor union, or some other group. Characteristics of Group Life Insurance Group life insurance covers a group of people under a single contract. It is most commonly provided through a group annually renewable level term insurance policy, though some insurers also offer group whole life, group universal life, and even group variable universal life products. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners, NAIC, model group life insurance acts set the standard for group term life insurance policies. Adopted in most states, requirements include A group must cover at least 10 people under one master policy, though exceptions exist on a state-by-state -state basis. Individual medical examinations are generally not required. The insurance must be purchased for the benefit of the participants. Many states prohibit employers from being named as beneficiaries. The plan must be non-discriminatory and must use the same formula for determining benefits for all covered participants. On a per-person basis, group life insurance is significantly less expensive than individual life insurance for any given death benefit amount. Most plans link coverage amounts to the individual's salary in some way. Some states limit the amount of group life insurance that can be offered by plans in that state. Master Policy and Certificates of Insurance with a group life policy, the sponsor of the group plan, for example, an employer or labor union, is the policy owner and premium payer. The individual members of the group are the insureds. The group sponsor receives a master policy, which identifies the sponsor as policy owner and premium payer. Insured group members receive a certificate of coverage as evidence of coverage. Group life standard policy provisions. Like individual life insurance policies, Group life policies are characterized in part by standard provisions, including a grace period, typically 31 days, for paying the premium after the due date, an incontestability after two years except for non-payment of premiums and fraudulent misstatements on the application, an entire contract provision stating that only the application and policy document constitute the policy, a provision setting forth conditions, if any, under which the insurer can require an individual participant to provide evidence of insurability. A beneficiary provision giving participants the right to designate and change their beneficiary. A conversion provision giving terminated participants the right to convert their group life coverage to an individual policy of equal face amount without having to provide evidence of insurability. Contributory versus non-contributory group plans. Group insurance plans may be funded entirely by the plan sponsor or premiums may be split between the sponsor and the plan participants. If the premium is paid entirely by the plan sponsor, the plan is a non-contributory plan. If a portion of the premium is paid by the group member, the plan is a contributory plan. Minimum participation requirement. To prevent adverse selection and assure a good mix of risks, Insurers require that most group members must be covered under the plan. This is most readily achieved through a minimum participation requirement that varies only by whether the plan is contributory or non-contributory. If the plan is non-contributory, 100% of eligible group members must be covered. If the plan is contributory, at least 75% of eligible group members must elect to participate. Conversion Privilege Group term life insurance coverage normally ends for a participant when that person leaves the group. This can pose a problem for a terminating employee who is uninsurable. Fortunately, group life plans include a conversion privilege that gives terminating participants, even those who are rated or uninsurable, the right to convert their group life coverage to an individual life insurance policy without having to provide evidence of insurability. Whole life insurance is most commonly used with conversions, though a few insurers let terminating group participants convert to an individual term life policy. Conversions typically must be requested within 31 days following termination or retirement from the group. During this 31-day period, group life coverage continues in effect for the terminated employee. Key point. If a terminated participant in a group life plan dies within the 31-day conversion period, the group life death benefit is payable even if the participant had not yet applied for conversion. The maximum conversion amount is the amount of coverage the terminating participant had under the group plan.
When the group plan itself is being terminated by the sponsor, the conversion amount is usually limited to the lesser of $2,000 or the amount of each participant's coverage at the date of termination. Assignability Though they are not the policy owner, insured group members have certain rights. One is the right to assign ownership of the death benefit to another party, the assignee, either through a temporary collateral assignment, used in seeking a loan, or an absolute assignment, which is a permanent assignment of the benefit to another party. To be recognized by the insurer, all assignments must be made in writing to the insurance company and registered before the assignment is official. Eligible Groups To qualify for group insurance, a group must be a natural group formed for some reason other than purchasing group insurance. A group of neighbors, friends, or family members would not qualify for group insurance unless they also met a list of other conditions that insurance underwriters require of qualifying groups. The most common types of eligible group insurance sponsors are Employer-employee groups Association groups Labor union groups Multiple employer trusts, METs Multiple employer welfare arrangements, MUAs Employers Employers make up the largest segment of group insurance plan sponsors. Employers may either sponsor a group plan themselves or serve as a trustee of a multiple employer trust, MET, group plan established for the benefit of the employees. Most states impose a minimum size requirement for employer-sponsored group insurance plans, with 10 people being the most common minimum. Some states allow smaller employers to sponsor group insurance plans, though additional requirements may be imposed. Association Groups People who are members of associations, such as independent school districts or cities and towns, can be insured under an association plan. As with employer groups, a minimum of 10 people is typically required for an association to qualify for group insurance. Two or more associations in the same business can form a group to buy insurance for their employees. Labor Unions Labor unions can sponsor group insurance plans for the benefit of their members. Union-sponsored plans are subject to the following restrictions. No discrimination is permitted in determining who may participate in the plan. Either all members of the union, or all members of individual classes of the union, must be eligible. Premiums must be paid entirely from union funds or from a combination of union funds and member funds. If the plan is contributory, some part of the premiums is paid by the union member then 75% of the members must be enrolled. If the plan is non-contributory, premiums are paid entirely by the union, then 100% of the members must be enrolled. A minimum of 10 members must be enrolled when the policy is issued. Coverage during labor dispute. Group insurance coverage cannot be suspended or terminated if plan participants are involved in a labor dispute that has them on strike. Multiple employer trusts, METs. A multiple employer trust, MET, is a group of 10 or more employers in the same industry who form a trust to provide certain types of benefits for their employees, particularly life insurance. Federal rules require that no single employer contribute more than 10% of total funding for the plan purchased by the MET. Each participating employer serves as a trustee of the MET. The trust buys insurance for the benefit of the employees and is the owner of the policy. Multiple Employer Welfare Arrangements, MUAs Like a MET, a Multiple Employer Welfare Arrangement, MEWA, is an arrangement whereby a group of employers from the same trade or industry join to sponsor a group insurance plan. MUAs come in two forms. Fully insured, in a fully insured MEWA, two or more employers, usually from the same industry, form an arrangement to sponsor a group insurance plan for the benefit of their employees. The insurer's group insurance rules and requirements apply. Self-insured, MUAs with at least 5 employers and 200 employees may self-insure their plan. They must hold a certificate of authority from the state in which they are formed and must submit reports like those required of an insurance company. The MEWA can set the plan requirements, subject to state regulations. Key Point there are two notable differences between a MET and a MEWA. A MEWA may be established by as few as two, or more, employers, 
whereas a MET requires a minimum of 10 employers. Employees covered under a MEWA may be subject to different plan requirements based on their employer, whereas employees covered under a MET are viewed as working for a single employer and are subject to a single set of plan requirements. Group Underwriting Requirements Group underwriting focuses on the group, not its individual members. The success of group underwriting relies on there being plenty of healthy group members to offset those who would otherwise be rated or even uninsurable. This explains why group plans have minimum participation requirements. To offset the risk of loss based on the group, group underwriters require that groups are within an eligible category of natural groups, for example, employers, labor unions, meet or exceed the minimum group size, for example, 10 employees or union members, enroll a minimum percentage of eligible members, for example, 75% for contributory plans. Make sure group policy applications, including group census, are complete and accurate. While they can assign premium rates based on the risk posed by the entire group or by a subclass within the group, underwriters cannot charge higher premiums to individual group members based on their individual risk profile. Likewise, group plan sponsors cannot exclude individual members from coverage based on their risk potential nor can they reward selective group members with greater benefits. Credit life insurance. Credit life insurance is designed to cover a borrower for the amount of his or her outstanding loan. If the borrower dies, then the policy pays the policy's death benefit to the creditor. This is usually decreasing term insurance to match the declining loan balance. As the insured's loan balance decreases, so does the coverage. Though credit life insurance may be offered as individual insurance, it is more typically provided through a group policy. Either way, the creditor is the policy owner and the borrower is the insured. State law, which varies among the states, sets the rules for maximum coverage limits that the creditor can offer borrowers. It also prevents creditors from forcing borrowers to buy credit life insurance. For your review. Group insurance single master contract issued to the plan sponsor, for example, employer, association or labor union, that covers multiple plan participants, each of whom receives a certificate of insurance. To qualify for any type of group insurance, the group must be a natural group created for some other reason than to obtain group insurance. With a group life policy, the sponsor of the group is the policy owner and premium payer. The individual members of the group are the insureds, if the premium is paid entirely by the employer, the plan is known as a non-contributory plan. If some portion of the premium is paid by the employee, the plan is a contributory plan. Minimum participation requirements, 100% of eligible members in a non-contributory plan, 75% of eligible members in a contributory plan. Group life insurance underwriting looks more at the group as a whole than its individual members. Credit life insurance is a form of group insurance that uses decreasing term life insurance. Group life insurance is the primary source of insurance for many Americans. Uh, for some people, that's because they can't afford it, simply don't believe in the need for individual life insurance. For others, it's because they couldn't qualify for individual life insurance because of perhaps pre-existing medical conditions. In fact, one of the greatest benefits of group life insurance is that even people who would not normally qualify for an individual life insurance policy do qualify for group life insurance coverage by being part of the group that is offering the protection. Uh, when we talk about group life insurance underwriting, uh, we, we see that Group underwriting does not look at the individual risk, but rather it looks at the collective body of, of the organization in determining, for example, the group premium rates that would be applied. Now, it sounds like group life insurance is the answer for those who are uninsurable, and while this is true to a certain degree, it's important to understand that insurance companies are not entirely defenseless when it comes to guarding against adverse selection which is, again, the tendency of those who are uninsurable or certainly who need insurance to be uh, more inclined to try to seek insurance. Uh, some of the things that insurance companies have going for them uh, include the fact that to qualify for 
group insurance of any sort, the group must be a natural group. You couldn't have a pickup group, if you will, of people who need life insurance to, to get together and say, hey, let's call ourselves a group and qualify for group life insurance. It has to be a natural group. And number two, there are minimum size requirements that must be uh, in place. And this reduces the, the risk of a small group of uninsurable people happening to be together. It's by requiring a minimum size, you have some assurance that there'll be some healthy risks mixed into the group. Uh, there is also a minimum participation requirement. For example, if the group plan is non-contributory, meaning the employer pays the entire premium, then 100% of the eligible participants must participate in the plan. If the plan is contributory, it cannot be required that they participate in the plan, yet 75% must elect to do so. And these participation requirements really do exist to protect the insurer from having a group plan where maybe the employer says, hey, I'm going to pay for it all, but I don't want you people participating. You can't do that. If he pays for it all, everybody's got to participate. Likewise, as I said, if it's a contributory plan where the employees have to contribute part of the premium, it can't be so onerous that the participants, uh, the employees say, well, I can't afford it. I'm not going to participate. It has to be appealing enough that at least 75% of the people elect to participate. And then the last factor that works on behalf of the insurance company is the very simple fact that employees cannot select within a, beyond a certain limit the benefit. The benefit has to be defined in the plan of what the benefits are going to be. Because again, if employees could pick the benefit amount, you'd have uninsurable people seeking unlimited amounts of life insurance. So with those factors in place, the insurance companies are protected against extreme adverse selection by those who would otherwise be uninsurable. Okay, everybody, here's our four questions for this, this unit or this lesson. This is kind of a long one. Which statement about credit life insurance is, is the most correct? Uh, increasing term is most often used. If the borrower dies, insurers will pay the death benefit to the borrower's beneficiary. Creditors can require borrowers to buy credit life insurance as a condition. For obtaining a loan? No, I definitely don't think that's right. State laws typically set a maximum coverage limit that creditors can offer to borrowers. Um, I would say increasing term. If the employer pays an entire premium from group life, what is the plan called? Non-contributory, because you're not, they're not contributing anything. Which of the following statements regarding association group life is correct? There must be a minimum of 10 associations. Association is a member must share the premiums. The insured members are the policy holder. Um, I don't know. That's a good one. So uh, I don't know if I got that right or not. We'll see. Alpha Industries has a non-contributory group life insurance plan. What happens if Alex joins the company on March 1st? Uh, Alpha Industries has a contributory group life insurance plan. What happens if Alex joins the company on March 1st? Uh, he's only the employee. He can join as long as he contributes his share, I'm guessing. I'm guessing on all of these because I don't know. Okay, I got two wrong. Question one I got wrong. It's okay. State laws typically set a maximum coverage limit that creditors can offer to borrowers. That's the correct answer with credit life insurance. All right, this one I got right. Yay. Okay, if the employer pays the entire premium, it is non-contributory, which makes sense, right? Because employees aren't contributing anything. Okay, there must be a minimum of 10 association members to form an association group life. And, of course, this last one I got wrong, but I was totally guessing. So, he must be enrolled in the plan after a waiting period, if applicable. He must be enrolled in the plan. Okay, that's, a, that's what happens if he joins the company on March 1st. Okay, so that's the end of this video. It's almost 20 minutes, which is long enough to hold everybody's attention.
Thank you. Subscribe, join, come back for the next one. Thank you.